is Rosie Edda. That's right, Edda, E-D-E-H. Uh, I'm an anchor at uh, Global News and I'm one of the hosts for the Toronto Black Film Festival. This is the fourth annual Toronto Black Film Festival happening from February 10th to the 14th. It gets bigger and bigger every single year. I'm really, really excited about this year. It just shows you, you know, when you focus, when you have an idea, you focus in on it and you make it happen, you know, wonderful things really transpire. And Fabian Cola, she's the creator of the Black Film Festival. It started off in Montreal, moved over here to Toronto. It's in its fourth year, as I said. And this year we can expect a lot. And this lady is unstoppable. So I'm really happy to be a part of it. She is going to fill me in on all the different duties that I have. But I know that in those four days, you can expect to see a lot of incredible films because these are films that you won't normally see you know you're not gonna see them on the big screen in the big movie theaters they're smaller independent films it doesn't mean that they're not good it means that they're amazing it means that they're special unique and they speak to every one of us not just black folks every one of us they tell a story a unique story and I just encourage you to go to torontoblackfilm.com get your tickets just look, scroll through. There's movies from all around the world, South Africa, here in Canada. Just look. Even if you don't know the artist, just go, okay, I'll take this one. I'll go. And I'll go see a movie. And I bet you, I promise you, you will be moved. There is an um, a open panel discussion being held during the Black Film Festival with the incredible director, Clement Virgo, and also playwright, Trey Anthony. And that's an opportunity for any and everyone to come in and ask questions and no question is a dumb question. So I think that what's going to happen is you're going to get a, young, a lot of young people in there who are dreaming, who are thinking, who've got ideas but aren't really sure how to go about it. And I think what's going to happen is these ideas are going to take off like a rocket because you've got these incredible filmmakers such as Clement Virgo and then you've got Trey Anthony who created um, who created The Kink in My Hair, the play, which went on to be a wonderful show. It all started up here. You know, these people are geniuses, but every one of us has a genius inside of us. It's just sometimes it takes another genius is to bring it out and I think you know the youth and even the not so young come out to that kind of panel discussion and you're going to be inspired and that is happening at the Toronto Black Film Festival. Yeah, so once again I'm Rosietta I'm really happy to be a part of the Toronto Black Film Festival it's happening from February 10th to the 14th get yourself a ticket go in relax watch and be amazed. Being an inspiration um, is, is one one thing, um, you know, by working hard and, and, and really committing and, and staying disciplined and, and staying focused on, on what it is you believe in, what it is that's your passion. Um, I think when people see that, see someone really living their truth and being truly authentic, it, it inspires and it gives them a sense of hope that, oh, wait a minute, it can be done because he or she is doing it. So for me, I mean, I've always looked up to those who I get compared to and, and kind of follow and see their moves and and I just kind of tap into that. Um, and, you know, so that's been inspiring for me and I'm always like, well, if they can do it, I can't die. What is the difference? The only difference between and him and I is a time. Really, it's 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 um, it's just discipline. It's just uh, how hard you want to work for. Um, so yeah, I mean, and, and also you know, I'm just producing uh, films. I want to start, you know, um, uh, collaborating and, and putting together projects uh, for you know uh, for everyone, you know. Um, and I, I don't like to segregate. I don't like to be like, oh, we have to just create projects for us. I think that when you start focusing on just separating us all and doing segregation, you don't realize it, but it subconsciously can, can, can kind of work against you. I think we need to embrace everyone and really focus on that 
as a whole and not look at yourself as a as a black actress or a black actor, but look at yourself as an as an artist who happens to be a color, who happens to be black or whatever ethnicity you are. Focus on the art first and be 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 the best artist you can be because then the magic will come out and people will see you as oh my gosh, what is it? And they don't see the color and they're gonna put you they, they could have in mind a a, a white uh, you know, blonde, beautiful female for this role, and they have that in their head. You come in the room and you do something that just makes them go, wait a minute, and they start talking to each other. But they start rewriting. They'll start changing stuff up and going, well, you know what? We have to have you in this room. And so that's what I'm talking about. Just be your best. Be you. Stay focused. Believe in God. Put God for Walk by faith, not by sight is one of my favorite quotes. Yeah, I'm actually going to be going to my, uh, my homeland, Barbados. Um, uh, we're going to be filming the Errol Barrow story. Um, it's a docudrama um, about Errol Barrow, and uh, he was the first Prime Minister of Barbados uh, in uh, 1966. Uh, and he got us our independence as well. And, um, nice. We're uh, going to shoot that, and um, I have a good fortune of playing him. It's, uh, it's going to be the most challenging yet most rewarding role of my career, and um, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be there. Uh, let's see, um, you could. Well, this guy's obviously is not going anywhere. You can stream that show, buy it, however you choose to see it. Um, the film he did uh, recently called Black and White that I'm very passionate about, um, Kevin Costner, Octavia Spencer. Um, that film, I feel like, really hits home with a, with a lot of what's going on right now. Um, um, got some uh, a few episodes in Hell on Wheels coming very soon, which is very cool. I hadn't done period stuff in a while, so it was exciting to kind of get back into that realm. I'm not overly crazy about a lot of the period stuff, but it was, it was very, very cool to be part of the culmination of that show and the, the completion of the railroad. So yeah, I'm excited about that. You know, I think, I think it's something that I've always wanted to do. Um, performing is something that has always been in me. I remember being a, a very mild five, six, seven years old and doing uh, talent shows for the Toronto Parks and Recreation. So we used to do a lot of like singing and dancing. I, would, uh, I remember recreating the, the Michael Jackson, The Way You Made Me Feel video for this one talent show. And it's pretty cool, I remember winning that talent show too. So that was that was a lot in the early years and was able to transition into acting through unforeseen circumstances. But you know, everything happens for a reason. I was able to, to you know to put more time into acting of course, which is something I've always wanted to do regardless of the path with which I've arrived. Um, always been inspired to act from a young kid watching film, television shows. And I always wanted my own sitcoms. So. We'll be you know, looking up for that Well, too. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm just speaking it into the universe more than anything. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just remember just always wanting my own sitcom. Maybe I'll write something, you know, that, that illustrates my family, my African family, the African diaspora. So, that'd be fun. And how do you feel personally about what's taking place within the Oscars, being that it's a recent Well, topic? you know, it's, it's funny. Somebody just presented that to me and, and spoke about, you know, how, you know, we kind of have to... I think, I think more so they were trying to speak to how we can't be making these kind of issues every time a, a, a person of color is excluded or this and that. It's, look, it shouldn't even be a thing that there's not a representation of someone of color in the acting categories every year. It shouldn't be this thing where they take, they take black people, you know, we're, we're going to take uh, black people off one year. We're gonna take a break from black people this year in the acting category. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take a break from any person of color, uh, First Nation. Uh, Leo mentioned First Nation people in his speech, in his Golden Globe acceptance speech. That's a nobody would ever mention First Nation to anybody on that platform mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. anywhere. Right. Do you right. understand? For sure. So why don't we need to mention? So so this stuff needs to be discussed, and that's the only way we're gonna get past the race issue when we discuss it. And when we realize that we live in a very multicultural world, so why aren't there rep representations of the multicultural nature of the world, of the planet? 
You understand? We live amongst these people, but people can't identify with themselves on TV, in film, you know, in music right. all the time. Right. 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 So why is that an issue that people feel the need to identify? At the end of the day, that's what it is. We want people to identify with what they're seeing, interpretations of humans. But I, I just personally did not want to play a slave for three or four years or however long the show ran for. Mm -hmm. I'm an actor. I'm the actor's actor. Mm -hmm. That's me. And the idea of this is to change every time you see me. Mm -hmm. Not to play a slave for four years. Like, right. That, 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 right. that just doesn't excite me, especially as a black man. So exactly what you're saying in terms of being very limited to the type of stories we're even mm -hmm. associated with, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous. Which right. is like the most ridiculous thing in the world because I can walk you through a black man doing almost anything, Everything, for sure. being in almost any field nowadays. Right. But the light first and foremost. You just, there's going to be so many impediments. There's going to be so many barriers that stop you from becoming an actor, that stop you from getting your screenplay heard, getting your film watched if it's been filmed already. So it's one of those things where you just got to want it so bad first and foremost is what I feel like. Especially, especially wanted to come into the business. It's immensely difficult. I would not call this a steady job. So it's like you're gonna, at some point, you're gonna struggle a lot, and probably consistently, you're gonna struggle. So you have to know that already, and you had to make your bed with that before you even struggle. Most people can't do that. Most people. Oh man, I know this is going to be tough. I know I'm going to suffer. I know I'm going to struggle. But is it worth it to me? See, a lot of people can, can quantify it that way. How much do I love it? How much do I want it? And that's why I mentioned that. How badly do you want it? Because certain things just won't matter to people that want something bad enough that they're just so passionate about something and such a connection to something. That, so it, that won't matter. That's so soft mm -hmm. to people that, that want this. So, amidst the politics and amidst all of that, I still want this and I still love performing and I still enjoy being an actor. So that's, that's what I, I tell people, that's what I give people. And don't lose, once you've lost the love for this, check out. Because there's going to be so much shite that gets in the way. It's going to be so much in-between stuff that gets in the way of what makes you get up in the morning when you go a seven and things like that. You have to be strong. You have to be very strong. This is not, yeah. this business is not for everybody. No. Um, my name is Maddie McQuinn. I play Kuma Shot in Meet the Parents. And um, basically a little bit about me is, as Kalisha, I am a single mother after my kids meet our child. Um, so you're going to see me at the end as a twist. And what happens is you're going to be introducing to my work as a single mother and how I live as a black single mother in the ghetto, raising my child, trying to be a good mother. Um, it doesn't work in my favor. Not going to do too much spoiling, but you see, you see why it doesn't work in my favor and how that evolves and what happens to all of everyone else. So I will see you guys there and you guys can talk to us. Don't ever stop. Keep going. Speaking to me, myself, um, my parents were always focused on um, getting education. Balance, absolutely right. It gives a uh, foundation that I need to reach out for. I you know what? I was so miserable going to school. So I was like, you know what? To get this, let me give what I want a try. And I was like, one step before the other, happy to be just crying. It's a bit of a hard work, but it's a bit of a Yo, this is Lonzo Zekwe. I'm a filmmaker, writer, and director, and producer of the film Meet the Parents, playing at the Toronto Black Film Festival. You're watching QDR Entertainment. Keep it locked.